YouTube, it's your girl Malaika, aka Mali, aka Malibu, whatever you want to call me. You don't know that it is me, and this is Malaika's Flex. I want to say a happy Friday to all my subscribers, all my viewers. Happy Friday. I hope you guys are having a lovely Friday and that you will have a wonderful weekend. And if you're watching this when it's not the weekend, I hope that you're having a great week from wherever you are in the world. Now, I want to present to you guys uh, another school district. As you guys have been seeing on my channel, I've been slowly rolling out the different H1B school districts that I have contacted thus far. And today is no different. I'll be sharing with you a school district in Washington, D.C. Um, as the thumbnail would have suggested already, you are not required to have any form of teaching experience to teach with this school district. I think I'm going to read to you verbatim what they said in the email. So let's get into it. So they started out by saying, Hello, Malaika. Thank you for your interest in DC Public Schools. DCPS sponsors H-1B visas for foreign teachers once they are selected for hire by individual schools. So there you go. They do sponsor the H-1B visa. Now, if you're a new person, new subscriber, new viewer to my channel, the H-1B visa is a dual intent visa that could possibly lead to a green card if that is your aim. Now it says, we invite you to complete our centralized teacher application process using this link. And I'm gonna put the link below on the screen so you guys can type that out. Um, I've stopped putting link in my description box and I have a reason for it. So you can go to that link if you want to start the application process. But I would suggest that you hang tight in this video so that I can fully finish reading the, the, the email because she, gave very pertinent information that you will need for the application process. Um, so it says that when you are applying, please select US as your country of residence. So you guys, if you've been going through the applications over the past few weeks, you know that most of these school districts, you can go ahead and put your home country and whatnot. But for this application, and I want you guys to listen to me carefully because I don't want you to say, how come you told me that I could put my home country? For this application, for your country of residence, you're going to select the US, the United States, all right? Then it says, and enter a random nine digit number. Usually, the nine-digit number that we would say to enter are nine zeros or nine ones, but they're saying to enter a random combination of numbers. So if you want to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or three, four, five, seven, nine, ten, <laughs> whatever you want to put, make sure that it's a random nine-digit number that you can easily remember. What did I say? That you can easily remember or write it down for future reference. Write it down, guys. So don't just put in the number and continue, you know, zooming through the application. You need to write it down for future reference in lieu of a social security number. So of course, we know that you don't have any social security number. And if you have worked, worked in the US before, please go ahead and put your actual social security number. It doesn't change. Now it says this number will be needed should you be selected for hire. So we don't want to get selected for hire and you don't remember your number. They're going to need that number. It continues to read, if a school leader would like to hire you, they will be able to view your application materials and sponsorship status once you are advanced to our recommended pool. If a school leader wants to hire you, they will contact the staff and team indicating that they would like to sponsor a teacher for an H-1B visa. And the school will also work to secure the funding to pay the government filing fees. 
Now, I did ask in my question if they would be paying the premium processing fee, which, by the way, guys, is going up in February of 2024. It's no longer going to be the $2,500. If you've been following my channel, you know that all along it has been $2,500. I believe now it's $2,805. So it went up $305. I'm so sorry. It is what it is. That is now the fee for premium processing. Once again, if you're new to my channel, as the school district said, they will, they will pay the government filing fees. They are not responsible for paying premium processing if that was what you want. The standard processing, they pay for that, but standard processing can take up to five months, premium processing two weeks. So if it boils down to it and you need premium processing, bear that in mind, add that to your expenses as something that you could you will possibly have to pay all right it goes on to say there is not a requirement for the number of years with teaching experience because i asked them how many years of teaching experience do these teachers need there is not a requirement for the number of years with teaching experience for all of our applicants so that means that if you are in india if you are somewhere in africa if you are somewhere in the Middle East, if you, wherever you are in the world, in the Caribbean, if you are a United States citizen, they are not discriminating. The rule goes for everybody. Regardless of your citizenship, where you are currently living, you do not need to have any number of teaching years experience, and you do not have to obtain a teaching license prior to applying. But of course, you guys know if you've been following my channel that for each state, Teaching is a licensed, uh, regulated profession, and you will need a teaching license in order to start working. But of course, you don't need the teaching license before you apply. Um, after you've been selected, they will assist you by sending you the relevant links and whatnot with teaching, with how you can get your teaching license. All right, so that is that for the district of columbia public schools now as usual as i always do with my videos i'm going to go ahead and show you what the salary is looking like for this school district i'm also going to show you what the cost of living in terms of rent is looking like for this school district and i'm also just going to um go on that link that they had provided just to show you what it's looking like and where you can go just to help you to navigate better so stick with me now if you like what you've been hearing thus far go ahead and hashtag district of columbia public schools in the comment section down below usually i say this at the end but if you are liking what you're hearing thus far go ahead and hashtag district of columbia public schools in the comment section down below that makes me know that you're appreciating this information you're understanding it and of course you guys if you have um questions or concerns please put them in the comment section down below. You guys know that I live in the comment section and I'm always there to answer your questions. If I don't know something, I'll let you know. But, you know, put them all down there in the comment section down below. So let's head into the next part of this video. All right, guys. So I'm just going to go straight to this link that they sent in the email. And this is actually my first time clicking on the link. <laughs> so let's navigate this together. So the link uh, brings us to this um, teacher school year 2024 to 2025. It says that if you want to know, like, if you'd like to know more about the DC public schools that you should click that website there. We're not looking at that right now. Now, if you scroll further down, you will see where it shows you the full application process. As it says, there is registration and pre-employment questions. So candidates will need to register an account before completing their teacher application. Once registered, return to the application and click apply. After completing the pre-employment questions, candidates will be redirected to the candidate dashboard to complete the rest of the application. So in other words, there's a portal before the actual application portal. So after you've done all of that, with the initial application, it says that candidates will complete the rest of the teacher application in their candidate dashboard. Here, candidates will answer questions about their employment history, and you guys know the works. After that, there will be a phone interview. So if they like what they see on your initial application, 
They say that if advanced, candidates will be invited to a 45-minute interview over the phone or Microsoft Teams if located outside the U.S. with a current DCPS teacher. So a teacher will be giving you a phone interview. At this stage, candidates will also be asked to submit two person, professional references. And guys, uh, let me just say this about the professional references. Um, please be ready for them to contact them instantly. Um, I'm not saying this school district will, but that has been a trend amongst the school districts. It's something that I, that I forgot to tell you guys. Um, it came up in our group discussion. If you guys are not a part of our Telegram group for teachers, Go ahead and click the link in the description box below to get to that telegram group where you can ask all the questions that you want to ask um recommended pool so candidates who pass through all stages so that's the registration and pre-employment initial application and the phone interview of the screening process will advance to the teacher recommended pool and once they're there candidates can view and indicate interest in specific vacancies School leaders may conduct additional screening at the school level, and please note candidates will only be eligible for hire once they have either submitted a complete credential application or acquired a, a valid teaching credential through the Office of the State or the Superintendent of Education, OSSE. All right, now... You can go ahead and read the rest of the, the, the web page, you know, where you can look at your licensure requirements um, and all that. When you scroll down to the bottom, you will see, would you like to apply to this job? Log in if already registered or otherwise, please, please register. Remember it said initially that you have to register before you can actually head to the initial application. So you're going to select, please register. You're going to fill out all this information that it's asking you to fill out and then you're going to go back to the initial page and you know go ahead and apply complete your application hope this was helpful once again this is my first time navigating this um this link so don't kill me in the comment section give me some grace all right, so here I just did a Google search as usual. I did District of Columbia Public Schools salary schedule, and I'm going to go ahead and click on their website. Let me click here. I saw the other link, but that looked like it was 2019, and I want a recent. So it's giving all the benefits, you know, teacher retirement plan and all those things. Let's look at the pay scales for teachers. All right, and I see there's a 2020 to 2023, so it's a three-year span, pay scale. Let's take a look at what it is looking like. All right, so we see it clearly here that if you are a 10-month employee and you are at step one, meaning that you have one year worth of teaching experience, ooh, this salary looks good. The at the bachelor's level, you will be getting. Let me zoom in. At the bachelor's level, you will be getting fifty-seven thousand. And guys, this is all after tax, before tax. Sorry, before tax. <laughs> oh, this was twenty twenty. Let me scroll. Sorry, so I scroll to twenty twenty three, and we see it looks better, even better, guys. So if you have one year worth of teaching experience, or you're at a step one year. Your very first year, at the bachelor's level, you will be getting 63000 And you know it goes up, two years experience, three years, five years, ten years. Ooh, the cost of living must be high in this school district because, like, I said I'm going to go on with the pay. Looking nice. All right, so you guys can finish, you know, going through the rest of the pay and see where you would fall on this pay schedule most times a 12-month employee is like the administrators um, usually teachers are class are classified as 10-month employees and that doesn't mean that you're only going to be paid for 10 months of the year it just means that you work 10 months of the year and even if it's divided into your summer if anybody knows anything about this school district i didn't ask about this but if you're listening right now and you guys know something about this school district because i know some school districts will only pay for 10 months um, some school districts will pay you for 12 months, as in they divide your 10 months pay into 12. That sounds wrong. 
<laughs> but you, know, you guys know what I'm trying to say. They split it up into 12 months instead of just giving you a pay for 10 months. Like currently in my school district, I'm a 10-month employee, but I get paid for the summer as well. And that would incorporate what I would have already worked for during the school year before. So yeah, if you guys know how this school district works, anybody who is listening, if you know, let us know if they pay for um, the summer or if it's just just for the 10 months and then you have to find a way during the summer. Um, if not, that's something that you guys can do as homework. You can try to figure that out. You know, do a little Google sh- search. That's all I do, you know, guys. I do my Google search. Um, well, that's not all I do because, you know, as you guys see, I do contact the school district and so forth. Um, maybe that's a question that I could definitely add to whenever I'm asking questions to the school district just so I could let you guys know because that's very important to know. On to the living situation. So once again, I'm doing a regular Google search, District of Columbia Apartments for Rent. Um, And of course, like I always tell you guys, sometimes it's not just apartments. Sometimes it's houses that they really do in this area, in some areas. Let's see, I'm not seeing my regular um, website that I like to use. But let me select on realtor.com and see what they have to show us. All right, so I knew that the rent was going to be on the high side based on the salary. So we are seeing 1800 and this is for a two bedroom with one bathroom to 2700. Yo, yo, that's a lot of money. 1900, yo, this is a lot of money for rent. 1600, 1600. And I like to look at the higher number actually. I really like to look at the higher number because I'm like, you know, worst case scenario, this is what it is. So you guys are seeing what the rent is looking like. And of course, there are different websites you can use. But, you know, usually they have the same apartments advertising. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys for tuning in week after week, day after day. I really do appreciate it. Once again, as, as, as I said earlier on, if you appreciate what was said in this video go ahead and hashtag district of columbia public schools in the comment section down below you know it's your girl malika aka mali aka malibu whatever you want to call me you don't know that it's me saying bye